I'm Larry Richardson, your step-by-step -step chef. In this edition of Cooking and Camping with the Step-by-Step -step Chef, the Camping Edition and the Cooking Edition, I'm going to give you an exclusive, an exclusive tour of Cookie's Kitchen. These are the essential items that you will need if you decide that you want to give car camping with a tent a chance, which I hope you will. You may also be interested in these items if you're glamping, I mean, I don't know, if you're glamping or, or if you're staying in a cabin or an RV, I mean, however you're camping, some of these things might come in handy. So let me give you an exclusive tour of Cookie's, Cookie's Kitchen. Okay, here's a closer look at the old chuck wagon. The first thing you're going to need is a cooler with ice that will keep meat, vegetables, eggs, uh, beverages, anything else you want cool, it will keep it at the right temperature. What I recommend is when you buy a cooler, pay attention to the dimensions to make sure that it will fit comfortably, comfortably inside your car. And when you get a cooler, the other thing you need to keep in mind is you will have to buy ice. So every day, every other day, depending how hot it is, you will have to buy ice. So that is our refrigerator. Next up, we have our stove. We have our Coleman stove, we have our gas, and we have a fire starter. You can also use matches if you want. I just find using this is a lot cleaner. It doesn't put a lot of soot inside the propane stove that I have to clean up later on. So that's just a recommendation. The other thing is, for safety's sake, and I keep repeating this, read how to operate a propane stove. And I would say that one of the most important tips is, if you smell gas building up when you're trying to light it and it's not lighting, turn off the stove, let the gas dissipate, and then try again. If it still doesn't light, you may have a defective stove, in which case you need to go find another stove. Now, what I strongly recommend with these stoves is Try them out before you get out in the field. You don't want to find out that you have a bum stove when you're in the middle of nowhere camping. So try it out outdoors, at home, outdoors. You don't want the gas building up indoors. Try it out out there and um, make sure it works and then proceed from there. The next thing, depending on where you're camping, that you're going to need is water bottles. Now, if you're in a full service campground, they might have plenty of water available and uh, potable water, water you can drink and cook with. So you don't have to worry about it as much. But what I usually do is I'll buy about six of these gallon bottles and I'll use them for fresh water, for um, cooking, for cleaning, uh, for drinking, for any number of purposes. And then if there's a spigot or a well pump at the site, I'll just refill them until they get funky and then I throw them away and I replace them with new bottles. But you are going to need a water source. And again, if you're on a full service campground that has water, it's not as big a problem. If you're at a site like I'm at right now, which is a primitive site, I have to bring everything out here. I have to bring everything. And um, having enough water is critically important to me. So keep that in mind. And I mean, in most cases, experts say, each person in your camp party will need one gallon of water a day, but you may also need additional water for cooking, depending on what you're making and for cleaning. So those are all issues to keep in mind when you go out camping. The next thing we have is Cookie's Mess Kit. And it is a mess right now because I've been camping for days up here. And I have a cutting board. I have pots in here that I can put water into boil and you know make spaghetti sauces and all that stuff, which is actually one of the recipes on stepbystepchef.com under the cooking and camping with the step-by-step -step chef. I show you how to make a quick, a very quick spaghetti sauce using fresh tomatoes out in the field, which is kind of cool. I also have a pan, a frying pan. I have my can opener. It's a little hard for me to work around this, but I'm gonna do my best. I have spoons, slotted spoons. I have, um, of course, a spatula. I have some um, dinnerware, fancy dinnerware, that I do wash. These are um, forks and spoons that are reusable, and I do reuse them. I also have a plate and, and some other plates there in bowls that are reusable too. I have 
paper towels, which to me, I mean, if you want to use washcloths in the field and sponges and all that, a lot you can. I certainly have a sponge and, and a, um, you know, one that can um, has a little abrasion to it for the pans. But um, I find paper towels are critical just in the process of uh, cooking and cleaning. So, uh, you know, if you want to go the reusable you, uh, route, more power to you. But I just find that uh, to save time because you do spend a lot of time when you're cooking out here getting things done. And paper towels, that's one of the luxuries that I allow myself when I'm camping. So that is the mess kit. The next thing that's very important to me is plastic boxes that hold canned goods, dried goods like spaghetti and rice, um, some spices and some condiments. And the reason why this is really important to me is that having it protected in plastic in these cases, it, it allows me to carry them around more easily to um, picnic tables and back or wherever they need to go. But another thing that is critically important about them is they help to keep squirrels and chipmunks from eating my lunch. And trust me, if you leave this stuff, if you leave food of any sort just in bags or on top of a picnic table, and I've seen this over and over where people do this, even though the um, park departments tell them not to, uh, how, well, like the minute you leave your campsite or you, you turn into your tent, it is going to be mayhem. They get, <laughs> they get attacked by um, crows, by ravens, by squirrels, by chipmunks. I actually got fooled one time where I left the back of my vehicle open so I could go watch a cute chipmunk run back and forth. And these were sitting on the ground. I mean, not these, uh, a bit, some bags that I had were sitting on the ground and the chipmunk gnawed through the bags and bit like each apple I had, uh, <laughs> each like pack of potato chips or whatever, like granola bars and stuff like that. He bit each one of those once. So that little chipmunk um, cost me a lot of money. And it was actually not the chipmunk I was watching that did this, it was his friend. So the chipmunk that was running back and forth being cute, he was the diversion. And the other one was eating my chow. So keep that in mind. Food handling is very critical out here, just as it is at home. You wanna make sure that you have some um, dish soap with you. I have the bio biodegradable uh, dish soap so that I can clean. And if I have to um, deposit it on the land and it runs off, it doesn't harm anything. So try to keep that in mind too. Try to keep this, um, uh, try to keep this stance in mind where you do want to live, you do want to have a great time, but you won't, don't want to do anything that harms the environment. Now, if you watch my cooking videos, which I'm sure you will, you will get an idea of how all of these materials are used when I am cooking and camping. The other thing is don't forget your can opener, don't forget your can opener, don't forget your can opener, because canned food will play a role in your cooking and camping experience. And, um, and I show you in the, um, in the cooking videos how to get it done and even make canned food taste good and fresh. So that is really the essentials. And then anything else, like go mentally, make a mental list of the things with the foods that you like to make that, that you want to bring. Like I bring some very essential spices and I make sure I have my salt and pepper and all that. But um, depending on the type of cooking, that you like to do, make sure that you have all of your comfort foods and spices on hand. Anything that you can make at home practically, you can make out in the field. I mean, I, I don't think I'd try a, a fresh Thanksgiving turkey because you would probably use as much propane as is in the entire state of Utah right now trying to cook it. So here I am, a grand staircase Escalante. I'm about to make my dinner using this kit and I hope it helps you to decide what to do when you go cooking and camping with the step-by-step -step chef. I'll try to make it. So there you have it. Those are the essentials that you need when you're cooking while camping. You're pretty much creating a simplified version of your own kitchen. You have to make sure that you have food, you have to have water, you have to have your spices, 
you have to have storage containers, you have to have a means to cook the food and keep the cold food cold. So it really is a, it's a very simple process. It's not, I hope I didn't make it sound complicated, but if you cover these bases, you're gonna be fine. Cooking and camping are gonna be an absolute joy to you, as it is to me. Now, if you like this video, please visit stepbystepchef.com. I am posting free printable recipes that you can use at home or while camping on the site. I already have over 175 breakfasts, lunches, and dinners recipes on that site. And each one, each one has its own video, step-by-step -step video, to show you how to make these delicious meals and dishes. So I hope you will take a look. And you're also going to find additional camping videos too. I do an overview video. I do a video on how to set up a tent. I'm doing this video about how to set up your kitchen. I'm gonna do a safety video. I'm gonna do a hiking video. I'm gonna cover all of the things that I think will help you to go out and, and camp and really enjoy it, really get the most out of it and have a fun time while eating well. That's not asking too much. So I hope you will tune it back in. So again, I am Larry Richardson. I am your step-by-step -step chef. I'm enjoying the day at Grand Staircase Escalante. I was out at Bryce Canyon earlier. I'm famished and I'm about to eat. So I'll see you in the next episode.